Hello at Medical Sciences Med Easy by Naftali Muhumza. And in this session, we want to talk about glycogen metabolism. And under glycogen metabolism, you know that glycogen is a complex compound which is built up from glucose. That whenever we take excess glucose, it is stored in the liver and the skeletal muscle in the form of glycogen. And glycogen is formed by a process known as glycogenesis. And when we want to break down this glycogen to produce a glucose, which will provide ATP, is known as glycogenolysis. So in this session, we want to look at glycogenesis first to see how we can convert glucose to glycogen in liver and the muscle. So this process of glycogenesis, it occurs majorly in the liver and the skeletal muscle. It occurs in the liver and the skeletal muscle. And this in the cytosol. So we see liver and muscles carrying out the process of glycogenesis. And this glycogenesis, we are saying glycogenesis is the conversion of glucose to glycogen. And, we know, and this glycogen is how we store, in, we store glucose. So it is a storage form of glucose. If we want to store glucose, we store it in the form of glycogen. So in this video, we want to see how can we convert glucose to glycogen in liver and skeletal muscles. And this process starts with that if I have glucose, it is converted to glucose 6-phosphate. And this glucose 6-phosphate is converted to glucose 1-phosphate. We know in, glyco in glycolysis, glucose 6-phosphate is converted to glucose 1-6-phosphate. To glucose Glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate, but here we are converting it from glucose 6-phosphate to glucose 1,6-phosphate. And after forming this glucose 1,6-phosphate, it is the one where we add a UDP. We add a UDP to form UDP glucose. From UDP glucose, and after forming this UDP glucose, it is the one we can use to form alpha 1,4 glycosyl units glycosyl units and these units are the one that we use to build the glycogen and this glycogen built it can also be broken down back to glycogen 1,6 to glycogen to glucose 1-phosphate by an enzyme known as the deblanching. So I see the action of the deblanching enzyme. So this is basically the summary. So when we look at one step by step in the details, that if we want glucose in the liver, it is a glucokinase enzyme. In the liver, glucokinase is the one that catalyzes the phosphorylation of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. This is in the liver. And in the muscles, it is hexokinase. So in muscles, hexokinase enzyme, in liver glucokinase, it catalyzes the hydrolysis of ATP to form ADP plus phosphate inorganic. In the presence of magnesium ions are the cofactor. We see it adding the phosphate group at carbon number six of glucose. And after forming glucose six phosphate, it is converted to glucose 1-phosphate by an enzyme known as phosphoglucomutase. So we see phosphoglucomutase, phosphoglucomutase enzyme catalyzing the isomerization or the intramolecular arrangement whereby we are going to shift phosphate group at carbon number six to carbon number one. For example, if we have our glucose with six carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
Antibodies that carbon phosphate is at carbon number six. We see it shifting from carbon number six to carbon number one. That is what we call isomerism by phosphoglucomutase. Transferring the phosphate group from carbon number six to carbon number one of the glucose. So what happens after forming glucose one phosphate by phosphoglucomutase enzyme, we see a higher energy compound. We bring a higher energy compound, and this higher energy compound is known as UTP. UTP is uridine triphosphate, whereby it is hydrolyzed to form a pyrophosphate. So UTP is the one when it is phosphorylated or when it undergoes hydrolysis, it produces UDP, uridine diphosphate, with cleavage of a pyrophosphate. This one is known as a pyrophosphate. It is a higher energy compound. So we form UDP glucose by the action, and what catalyzes this reaction of the hydrolysis of UTP is known as UDP glucose phosphorylase, pyrophosphorylase. So the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is known as UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. Phosphorylase enzyme. So UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase from the word pyrophosphate is the one that is cleaving off the pyrophosphate and adds UDP, that is uridine diphosphate to glucose to form UDP glucose. That is the reaction whereby UTP being a higher energy compound is the one that is utilized. After utilizing, after formation of this UDP glucose, this UDP glucose, it's carbon number one. And this process must occur in the presence of the glycogen primer. As we know that nothing begins from nothing, we need a primer to trigger the synthesis of glycogen. And the primer, we need what we call a glycogen primer. We need a glycogen primer. And this glycogen primer, it's if it is, it's carbon number four. So the carbon number one of the incoming glucose plus the terminal carbon number four of the group of the terminal glucose, they come and combine. They combine together to form a, a, to form what you call alpha one four glycosidic bond. Form alpha one four glycosidic bond. And this bond is occurring between the carbon number one of the incoming glucose and the carbon number four of the glycogen primer of the terminal glucose. That is what is happening. That if I have my glycogen primer here and I bring UDP glucose, the UDP glucose, what happens is that if I can remove the UDP glucose, this terminal glucose is having carbon number four. This is always carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, and carbon four of the glycogen primer. This is the primer, the glycogen primer. We see the incoming glucose. The in, this is the incoming UDP glucose. It's carbon number one joins with this, joins here to form alpha one four glycosidic bond. And this process continues, it brings another glucose, it brings another glucose, it continues to join more glucose on this chain. And this process is catalyzed by an enzyme known as glycogen synthase. So we see this formation of these four units is by an enzyme known as glycogen synthase. Glycogen synthase is the one that is doing the law. So glycogen synthase enzyme is the one that is joining the carbon number one of the incoming glucose together with the carbon number four 
of the glycogen trimer forming the alpha 14 glycosidic bond and it continues adding until the branch point it continues adding these glucose molecules until this branch point reaches 11 molecules that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 it continues adding that is 9 10 11 so it continues adding the glucose molecules until it reaches 11 units long so when it reaches 11 units it stops there that's where glycogen synthase stops adding in the coming glucose molecules whereby it combines carbon 1 and carbon 4 of the glycogen trimer then after forming these glycosyl units which we have formed at this point we need a branching enzyme the branching enzyme is that when this unit becomes longer we need to form a branch and this branch normally occurs at carbon number 4 of another branch so the carbon number 4 that when this chain becomes long up to 11 glucose unit we see the removal of 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 these six glucose molecules which are added here the branching enzyme comes and cleaves them off by cutting at this point and it brings them and adds them at carbon 1 2 3 at carbon 4 so it brings them and adds them at this point and whereby this at this point it adds them via alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond at the branch point this one is going to be the branch point so hence we shall form we shall remain with this compound whereby it remains with this, this one unit and the six of them are added at this point so we form this branch point here of beta of six one two three four I can remove this from four five six and this branch point at carbon number four it forms alpha one six glycosidic bond glycosidic bond and this branch point the branching of this glycogen is done by the enzyme known as the branching enzyme is the branching enzyme so the branching enzyme is the one that is getting the six molecules that is an 11 branch unit it cleaves off the six and comes and adds them at carbon number four of another chain or another branch point forming this unit that is what is happening and at this long run we form our glycogen so this is already a glycogen so it can't after removing this we come and again we add more we add more we keep adding more when they reach 11 molecules ahead we come and cleave them we add it at another branch point and the enzyme that is catalyzing this branching of this of these units is known as the branching enzyme so the branching enzyme is the one that does that load until we form a complex complex of glycogen and this is what we know as glycogen that is glycogen so this one marks the end of glycogen synthesis glycogen synthesis whereby it occurs in the liver and musculoskeletal muscles because we need energy there and we have seen this process is conversion of glucose to glycogen whereby we have glucose being converted to glucose 1 6 phosphate by hexokinase in the skeletal muscle or glucokinase in the liver then glucose 6 phosphate undergoes isomerization by phosphoglucomutase to form glucose 1 phosphate whereby phosphoglucomutase it carries glucose from carbon number six and puts it at carbon number one 
Then after forming glucose 1 phosphate, a higher energy compound UTP. It comes and adds the UTP to glucose, then it removes the pyrophosphate by an enzyme known as UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. And it is this pyrophosphorylase that leads to the formation of UDP glucose. And this glucose that is incoming, we have carbon number one of the incoming glucose combining with carbon number four of the glycogen primer, which initiates glycogen synthesis. That carbon number one of the incoming, incoming glucose combines with carbon number four of the glycogen primer to form alpha-1 for glycosidic bond. And it keeps on adding glucose, glucose via alpha-1 for glycosidic bond until 11 molecules. And when they reach 11, the blanching enzyme, this formation of these bonds is by glycogen synthase, but the blanching and when they reach 11, they remove 6 by the blanching enzyme to form a blanch point, which is alpha-1, 6-glycosidic bond. And this is the formation of glycogen. And what stimulates this glycogen? How is it regulated? How is it regulated? The glycogenesis is hormonal, majorly hormone. We see hormones like glucagon, hormones like Insulin. Insulin, it stimulates this process. Whereas glucagon, glucagon, epinephrine, thylacine, all these ones, for them, they inhibit. So this is the hormonal regulation of glycogenesis, whereby hormones like insulin stimulate glycogenesis Whereas hormones like glucagon, epinephrine, and the thylacine, for them, they inhibit glycogenesis. Thank you so much for listening to this session of glycogenesis. Hope you have enjoyed. Keep your comment, put your comments, or subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and like the video. Thank you so much.